Hi, this is M, and this video is going to be a very quick one, and the project that I'm working on is adhering this brown paper to the back of this canvas so that uh, you don't see the, uh, you know, this, this back side that's um, very, very rough. And for the project, I'm just going to need the, I'm going to use this PVA bookbinding glue, and then I've got a little bowl with a little bit of water in here and a sponge that uh, I use for paper making. And the reason for this video is because uh, this is a technique that I've known for I don't know how many how many years, a really, really long time. And uh, although it's been a while since I've, I've backed any pictures, uh, except for small curio pictures. I, I, I use that kind of backing on this one picture that I do all the time. And so I thought I'd film this because there may be people that don't know the method for getting a tight, um, a tight finish on their backing paper. So having said that, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to prep the paper. And what you do is you take and you grab a sponge, wring it out so it's just damp, and then pat down. And what you you don't want your paper to be soaking wet, but you want it to be very damp. What you're doing is you're getting the fibers to loosen up because that's the secret that. Uh, helps to tighten the paper once you adhere it down onto the back of your picture. By loosening up the fibers, what happens is, and do both sides, is that it will shrink and get taut. Now I've cut this down uh, so that I've got it going to have about a quarter of an inch. You see how this is starting to lay flat now that it's damp? You want it damp enough that it's fairly damp, but not so damp that it's going to rip apart when you put it on. At least hopefully not. <laughs> I'm going to do the other side again. See if I'm still in frame. Yeah. All right. Let's do this one more round. Down here. This isn't damp down here yet. Okay, so you can see by the color, it's getting pretty uniformly damp. And I'm going to leave this in real time so you can see how long it takes. This is a 12 by 12 canvas. All right, I'm going to put the bowl aside. And I'm going to set this aside because I don't, I don't want the front side of what I'm working on to get, uh, to get wet. Wipe the table here. Bring this over. Now I'm going to take this uh, book binding glue and I'm going to run a bead about a quarter where I think that the edge of this is going to be and if there's a little bit too much, which it looks like there is, it's going to seep out. Uh, but that's okay because we'll, we'll wipe it up. Alright, and I'm just going to smooth this bead down all the way around. I'm sure that people who are experts at this, because I'm not claiming to be an expert, um, have better procedures. This is just for us lay people out here that want a little bit more of a professional finish on the back, but we're not trying to do museum quality you know we're not we're not museum quality people here it'll work for years and years but 
I'm not claiming 100 years from now we're still gonna, gonna be hanging in there. All right, so now we're gonna take our damp paper and we're gonna put it on here. Try to position it as best we can. And just like when you're doing a canvas, you wanna start from the middle and you wanna pull out and start working it out. I'm trying to get stretched a little bit, so work it out, work it out. This is probably the most critical part. And for this 12 by 12 canvas, I cut this paper 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but I must have not been perfect because this side sure seems longer than that one. So pull out gently. That's what I'm doing as I'm trying to see how, I don't know if you can see how it's getting taut. Pull out gently, then start over here, pull out gently. Now I'm going to go corner to corner. And I'm just going to keep working it a little bit. I'm going to keep working from the middle and go out. Yeah, I was a little off on on this side here is a little, a little, uh... okay, so now I'm trying to make sure that the glue is adhering, and I'm going to just dab the, the sides around here. And if after it dries there's still some pockets here, I'll just take the glue and run, it, run some beads under there if I need to, if I'm worried about it. But as long as it's adhering fine. Okay, I probably don't want to work it too much more. Or I don't want to risk ripping it. So, we see. Now, hopefully, if it works according to plan, I'll come back when it's dry and we'll see, we will see how taut it is. Okay, I'm turning the camera back on because I have a few little pockets right there, see, like here and so and there. And so what I'm taking is, I'm taking the, the uh, glue and I'm going to tuck some up under there. Get some more. That's probably, that's too much, but anyway. I have to get that phone. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I put a little glue up under there, so I'm just trying to tack down these little air pockets so I don't have little air pockets up under there. And I think that's looking better than it was. Again, you don't want... I'm getting close to overworking it, so I, I really do need to stop and not have this obsessive personality here. And you can see how that really helped really helped uh, bring that down and then when I sand it down even more there now I'll just do the same thing to all four sides so that we fix those air pockets and I'll come back after it dries hi this is M and it's the next morning and we're going to take a look at the results of our brown paper backing onto this canvas uh, first, I just want to take a quick second uh, to show these little curio pictures because yesterday I mentioned that I used this paper backing on the curio pictures and have for a long time, so I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. So these are little mini uh, displays, and they're in wood frames, and they're laminated. These pictures have been laminated. It, they don't have glass. And on the back you can see that I do the same thing. I use the paper 
and uh, I stretch it out with the same method that we're talking about in this little video sequence here. And underneath this paper there are also magnets so that this can be used either with the little mini easel, which is this guy, that it can be you can sit on sit on the mini easel, or you can put it on a refrigerator or something that's magnetized because the magnets in the back. So it serves a dual purpose. So that's what these are. These are just little curio arrangements. Uh, let's see what the size is. I can't remember. It's it's about two and three quarters, a little bit more by <coughs> not including the not including the the easel about uh, three and a quarter. So that's what these are. I don't have them on Etsy yet. Uh, someday, someday they'll get there. So here's just a couple of them. These are real flowers. Snapdragons, hydrangean, loop, uh, larkspur. Okay, let me move these out of the way and then we'll go into more detail about the results of the uh, packing. Here's the brown paper that we applied yesterday and now it's dry. It did uh, Between the brown paint on the back and the glue it did leave a little, um, a little distressed border, but that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But as you can see, the sides are nice and tight. There's no more of those big gaping gaps that I showed you yesterday that I went around and fixed. You do have to babysit it for about a half an hour or so when it, you know, when you're letting it cure at first. You know, I went every once in a while and just kind of pressed down around the sides as it was drying and getting tacky. But other than that, that's all I did. And tight as a drum. Now the only other consideration is that there is a, uh, a work on the front that I'm going to be putting on the in my Etsy shop and I'm going to go into a separate video showing you A what it is and B what I'm doing to protect it uh, before sale. So I guess you'd say that's kind of a little teaser that hopefully you'll go and watch that video. I'll link it here and that reveal will happen at that time. But the consideration that I do need to do as one final thought for making it for sale is how to hang it. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn between what to hang it with because I have a couple thoughts. And I don't know if anybody wants to comment down in the comments section and tell, tell me what their thoughts are. I'd certainly uh, appreciate it. I have three different kinds of hangers here. This one is just a, I don't know, they just call it a picture hanger. I went to Ace and picked these up. It's, it's probably what I would consider the, the lowest grade hanger of the three types. It's got those little spikes on the back and then you just you know, put them on here and then you just flip the tab out a little bit when you want to hang it. And it only this only is going to hang in one orientation. There's a certain way it faces, so I only need one hanger for the center. The one reason that I might want to use this one is because uh, of those command strips and the things that they have in the market nowadays for hanging pictures on the wall so that you don't damage the wall and then you just pull it a certain way when you want to take it off and uh, like if you're a renter or that type of thing and I was watching a video uh, about uh, command strips as I was going through this debate process and it looks like they tell you to take off all of any of your wiring if you had if I had wire back here and you use command strips what they're calling for is that you actually take the wire off or any or the hangers anything that they're using to hanging so if someone wanted to use command strips and this is what was put on to the back of here for hanging it pretty much lays flush so you wouldn't have to take it off so that would alleviate that that whole step 
but I don't know if anyone who wants to buy this uh, this work would uh, is going to be using something like command strips or whether they're actually going to want to do the old-fashioned method, which is put a put a hang you know something a hanger or a hole in the wall, which is what I do. But then I'm not renting right now, so I, I don't have that concern personally. The other method would be to use uh, these sawtooth hangers and put that here, which I have a lot of pictures that have sawtooth hangers, but it sticks out just enough that I think if somebody wanted to use those command type strips, you'd probably maybe have to take it off. So if I was going to use this, I may as well use that. And then I can go the traditional route, and I'm not sure which size uh, eyelet uh, screw that I would use, and just hang it the traditional way with wire. And just, um, you know, just use wire in the back. The one thing about if I use wire is it would be ready for if someone purchased this and wanted to put a frame on it. You wouldn't need glass. You'd just either have a frame made or go buy a 12 by 12 frame and just the frame, which would cut down on the cost, or have one made to your specifications. And then just put the frame on it, and you already have the hanger. So you wouldn't even have to do a deal with that. That, that convenience would already be taken care of. And, it, and I think that this option would be a little bit more professional, for, uh, especially if somebody wanted to take, the, take it to the next, next level. So I'm torn. I don't know. I'm debating between making a decision or just, uh, uh, since I'll probably have a product video for this, just saying, well, I'll do whichever one you want and give them the option, A, B, or C. And, and then I'll just, just do the hanger once uh, a purchaser lets me know what, what, what they prefer. So I think that sums up this whole, whole um, point of this video. So hopefully, uh, maybe maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, and I thank you for hanging in there. And please uh, look for the reveal of what's on the front and what I did to protect it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.